All right, so let's talk about exercise 9.49, problem six. Uh, so again, I've got the information shown here for your sheet metal defaults. Uh, I've got some PDF attached and uh, another file, the DWF, uh, which you can use to look at the model. Essentially though, what we have is a, uh, a round bottom with a, you know, it's a little cylinder with on top of it, a round to square um, transition. So essentially what you're actually looking at will be a shape about like this. Now, um, you know, it's kind of hard to, <laughs> to me at least when I picture it, it doesn't make sense to look at it in top view, you know, where you're seeing that actual shape like that. But, um, when you're making something like this, it's a, it's kind of an interesting conundrum. So if you were to have a transition, you typically struggle to connect things to it. Uh, say right here you had a flange on one end and a flange on the other. It may be that they actually have like a little, you know, like the cylinder here. They may have a little, just a lip a little bit, like a little rectangle. And I actually originally when I modeled this, I put it. I'll just kind of show you what I mean here. <coughs> oh no, I deleted it, I think. Sad day. Oh, it's gone. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, essentially it'd be like if you just had an extrusion up here to make it straight, uh, that way, you know, whenever, uh, fabricators would be welding to this, they wouldn't have to worry about the metal being in the way. It gives you just an easy face, you know, cause if you were to do a flange right here, you wouldn't really struggle to connect it. But if you did here, it's, uh, the material's a little warped and it's a little harder to connect to. So if you want, you can include a little top face, just the, uh, thickness of sheet metal up there, but what I'm doing, uh, I would say just do like I'm doing here and, uh, you know, make sure you have your seams on the same side. These are modeled a lot like the uh, last assignment actually, which is all I do to create these is a, a sketch of one end of the transition on a plane and then offset from that plane and draw the other end. So, uh, it's the same for both. And then, you know, naturally I just add the rip. So let's go ahead and draw them up. Uh, so these are imperial parts, and if you're working in a part template, convert it to sheet metal. Fire up the sheet metal defaults. We'll change material to uh, steel mild. The thickness is 0.1046. The K factor is 0.44, which is already set. Uh, the rip size will be 0 0.0625, and then the bend equals thickness. So, <coughs> okay. So what we'll do, actually, what I'm going to do immediately is an offset plane. So uh, for this first part, you know, we've got it at zero and we need the plane to be at 0.62 from it. So I'll just go ahead and create that. And then what I'll do is I'll save this and save a copy of it. That way we don't have to redo all those settings uh, the next time. And you know what, I'm just gonna delete it. So I'll just put mine in downloads and then do a file, save copy as. And I'll open up that one I just made a copy of. Okay, so now that that's done, uh, I'm going to draw on that origin plane a diameter of 2.74, and this is for the bottom portion of the part. <coughs> I'll uh, turn that sketch visibility off and I'll draw on the work plane that we offsetted. I'll project the circle and do a lofted flange between the two profiles. Looking at it, uh, we have two things we got to change. We need to put on die formed so that it's perfectly round. And then we need to flip the direction so that it matches the extent of the sketch. Okay. So I'm going to draw on the top face. I'll draw a point and I tried to constrain it to something by clicking, but I missed. So I want to constrain it to the edge and align to the center point. Oops. Then we can do a rip choosing the outside face and the point. And there's our bottom <laughs> pretty straightforward on that one. Uh, the same concept applies and you know, conveniently if you really want, 
can make this even easier. So what I can do is go to the bottom, uh, right click on the sketch and hit copy. And then on the origin plane down here, I can actually right click and hit paste. So we've got that now. One thing we need to do is change the offset. So the height for this piece here is 3.25 minus 0.62. So 3.25 if I can type 3.25 minus 0.625 and it'll do the math there. Turn off the plane visibility. I'll start a sketch on that plane. And the part is symmetric, so we can just draw at the center point doing a two point um, rectangle with the diagonals. And we need this value to be 1.62. We can set the lines to equal each other on the edges to make it a perfect square. And then a lofted flange. <clears throat> we'll do die form. We need to flip the direction again. And then we'll do a rip. Um, for this one, it's kind of tough. I think what I'm going to do, and we'll see if this actually works. Eh, you know, we'll just do it the dirty way. Okay, so we'll just click this face. <clears throat> it's going to make the sketch a little slanted, but uh, usually if you do that, it works pretty consistent. So uh, I drew it constrained to the midpoint, and then it should just rip right through if I'm lucky here. Yep. Lovely. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Uh, and then we'll confirm that both parts work. So I'll hit create a flat pattern. And it did come in flat. So mission accomplished there. And same here. Nice. Okay. So back to our folded parts. We'll go ahead and create an assembly and place them both in. Just save them real quick. <coughs> Okay, there we go. All right, so we're going to constrain constrain the uh, the bottom part to the assembly origin. Got to really dig in there. Okay, so uh, most of these are going to be flush if you drew it, you know, in the same planes as me. So I'm just going to set it to flush. Choose YZ, YZ. Choose XZ, XZ, XY, XY. And that guy's good. So now I can go ahead and minimize the main origin folder for the assembly and expand the top. Same deal. Uh, you know, we want to set it to flush. That way it keeps it in a position that you drew it, essentially. Uh, for this one, we're going to choose the work plane. And You know, I forgot what we're missing, to be honest. Let's see. Okay. And XY to XY. And so, you know, just like that, you've got your part. Um, you know, if you were to try to measure it, you probably wouldn't get that exact, you know, 3.25. But if you measure from the sketch to the sketch, it comes out right. Uh, that's just one of those things when you have that warp metal, it's not going to perfectly capture it. And uh, if you're wanting to make sure that you're correct, open up that DWF. Wait for it. You'll see, I actually have the volume here. So, you know, if you are not sure if your part is correct, you can simply go to your eye properties. And for me, I'm going to uh, hit this drop down the quick access toolbar and turn eye properties on I can hit this little button right here the one that kind of looks like a, a 1990s cell phone <laughs> and uh, you can go to the properties the physical and look at the volume and you know it's just 2.48 here uh, that's rounded so 2.476 looks good uh, we've got nothing moving and uh, you know a simple little transition from square to round uh, there's many ways you could draw these parts, but you know the the most seamless way is to do as minimal work as possible, right? So uh, technically, although you could have drawn this shape uh, in one sketch and extruded, it's a lot of work, you know. So why not draw primitive stuff? And uh, that's how I want you to think about sheet metal in general: is 
uh, what is the optimal way to draw something without leaving room for error, right? So uh, keep that in mind. And if anybody's having any questions at all, just let me know.